Good morning, Kingsway. And thank you so much for choosing to spend your Sunday morning with us. I'd like to invite you wherever you are to stand with us for a time of worship together. Good morning, church. We are so glad that you've joined us today, wherever you are, and uh, happy Valentine's Day. Um, we're just going to continue to worship God, and uh, it's 
be grateful for the amazing love that God has given us today. So we're going to continue worship, and uh, we're so glad that you have joined us today.
it's yours. All of the glory, all of the glory, it's yours, it's yours, it's yours, it's yours. All of the glory.
God, we thank you for this day and this opportunity that we have to worship you. And we just want to give you all the all the praise and all the glory today, God. And even through this week, let us to continue to praise you through our actions and through our encounters with others. And that um, you would just work through us this week. In your name we pray. Amen. Welcome back, and thank you for joining us. We're so happy to share our service with you. If it's your first time here, make sure to check out the link in the description for our online connection card. We'd love to have you fill that out so that we can get in touch with you. We have plenty of ways to give, even online. You can check out our website and click the Give button and follow the simple instructions there, or you can text any amount to 84321. Thank you so much for what you do. Your giving allows us to reach our communities with the love of God. This past Monday was Muffin Monday, and it was awesome. We had so much fun going around to our local businesses and delivering the muffins, and it was so nice to get in touch with so many people. We want to thank everyone who gave and bought a dozen muffins because it's such a wonderful way to connect with our community. So thank you. On March 13th, we're going to be hosting a men's breakfast via Zoom. But for those of you who don't have internet or a computer, we're also going to be having a bring your own breakfast watch party here at the church. Pastor Jason Johnstone from Lincoln, Maine is going to be speaking, so you're not going to want to miss it. Make sure if you want to be a part of this to email Pastor Tim for the Zoom link. And that's all my announcements for today. Thank you so much for listening. And now Pastor Tim is coming to share the word. We are journeying in this season with Jesus on the cross. In the midst of incredible suffering, and if you can take a moment just to imagine the context and imagine the circumstances that surround Jesus on the cross. In the midst of that suffering, in the midst of emotional pain, in the midst of what has been incredible betrayal, Jesus spoke words. How many know words matter? Words, words can... Words can change things. Jesus spoke words on the cross. So understand that in this series that we're uh, in the middle of called Beyond Words, that we're, we're referring to the seven final phrases of Jesus on the cross. And it's so important that you just understand that this wasn't a, a sermon being preached and he wasn't by the Sea of Galilee and he, he wasn't just in a private home uh, talking to people. But incredibly, he is suspended between heaven and earth. He is nailed with spikes to a wooden cross through his feet, through his hands. A crown of thorns pressed upon his brow. It is an incredibly bloody scene. There's, there's anger, there's emotions running high on this hillside. And these are some of Jesus' last words, final words. And we're praying for revelation and for inspiration from the Holy Spirit to take us beyond words. W.C. Fields was an American comedian and actor, and he died in 1946. While on his deathbed, he was asked why he was reading his Bible. And his reply Reportedly, his final words, I'm looking for loopholes. Imagine. He'd lived his whole life 
Can you imagine coming down to the end of your life? And isn't it sometimes when you're, have you ever had a moment when your life flashed before you? Have you ever had a moment when, when you really felt like you were facing death? It's, it's interesting how thoughts can turn to eternity. Thoughts can turn to what now and what next. And imagine coming to the end of that journey and this is, this is where you're left. I'm looking for loopholes. Well, I have, uh, I have great news today. And uh, that great news is that there is no need for us to come to a point in life when all we have left is grasping at a straw, looking for a loophole. And that truth is wonderfully, wonderfully illustrated in our text this morning. It is an account of two criminals, and it is the second of Jesus' final phrases or sayings uh, on the cross. Luke chapter 23, I'm going to begin at verse 32 and then jump to verse 39. It says there were also two others, criminals, led with him to be put to death. Then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him, saying, if you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other, answering him, rebuked him, saying, do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Anyone here uh, ever succumb to the temptation of comparing yourself? Ever fall into the trap of looking at someone else and comparing yourself to them? Now, there's two sides to that coin. Neither, neither are really great. Sometimes we might compare ourselves to get a boost. Nobody else will encourage us, so we'll puff ourselves up. And uh, we may compare ourselves and say, well, at least I'm not. Or I don't. On the other hand, the comparison sometimes is, leaves us uh, feeling like we, we just don't measure up. Feels, leaves us feeling somehow uh, that we lack. But it is always dangerous to compare. And the truth is that wherever we land in that process, you know, better than someone, less than someone, you know, equal to someone, you know, it is, it is completely useless when it comes to a relationship with God because my, how I compare to you and how you compare to me and how we compare to each other is irrelevant as a basis for one's need or for one's relationship with God. We have an incredible uh, comparison here in this account. In the story, we have two criminals and we have a savior. Let's take a moment and focus on the criminals. These thieves had really a lot in common. Think about it. Uh, they were both guilty of crimes. They both were in close proximity, proximity of Jesus. I mean, they had, uh, 
they had been beside or around him as, as he and they were pronounced guilty, as they were, were beaten, as they were nailed to crosses. And these two thieves were, were, uh, were, uh, were hung uh, on crosses of their own and died in close proximity, so they had the same reference point, as it were. They were both witnesses to the treatment of Jesus. They, they saw how he was betrayed. They saw how he was treated. They both were about to die. Can you imagine? They both had this knowledge that they were only minutes or at best hours from death. And truly, they both needed forgiveness. But this brings us to the fork in the road. As much as we compare and we can take a look at these thieves and compare their lives, this brings us to a, to a definite fork. This is where they separate. This is where these two men separate not only in an attitude and in a, in a decision in a moment, but they separate for all eternity. Imagine. It's interesting how when one comes down to the end of life, we think about eternal things. And in this end moment, one criminal scoffed at Jesus with some real rebellion still ringing in his spirit. And some real rejection. He, he scoffed at this king of the Jews, so proclaimed. And he challenged him and said, if, if in fact giving him no credit, not acknowledging, not humbling himself, but if in fact you are the Son of God, then, then take yourself, save us. Save yourself and save us. Interesting how selfish we can become. But there's another criminal who seems, by some miracle, instead of a swirl of rebellion and anger, has come to a point of, of humility. Let me just pause and say, it is a glad day. It is a glad day when we humble ourselves before God. Amen? Amen. And this criminal came to this point in his life, at the very end of his life, yes. But he acknowledged, they both recognized their need because one criminal knew enough he needed to get down off that cross. But one of them humbly acknowledge the need. You know, one of the greatest limiting factors in our lives is our reluctance to ask for help. Listen, I, I, won't, I won't go into details. I've made myself look silly before. Why? Because I wasn't asking for help. I could, fi I could figure it out. I could do it on my own. And I know, no, I know none of you in this room have ever experienced such a thing. Wink, wink. Huh? It's incredible how we try and endeavor and, and greatly limit ourselves with our own personal reluctance to ask for help, and to the point that at times it's bizarre. How many times have we ever heard a voice from behind us, from another room, in the back seat, sitting next to us? How many times have we heard a voice say, Why don't you just ask for help? <laughs> 
to which we get more determined to our own demise. Fail we may, but ask for help never. <laughs> where, does, where does that get us? Huh? Well, two people facing eternity. And thankfully, one of them displays the humility it takes to ask for help. Two criminals and a savior. Verse 43. This is what Jesus said. This is the second of these seven sayings. And again, context, picture, surroundings. Think of it. Jesus physically dying. As one criminal turns to Jesus and says, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Remember me. Oh, to be remembered. Acknowledging that he was king of a kingdom. And Jesus said to him, I tell you the truth that today you will be with me in paradise. One sentence to change a destiny. One sentence to alter, to shift history. One sentence to bring hope to every person who sits at the bedside of a loved one, of a friend, encouraging them, reminding them that Jesus loves them, that Jesus is with them, that Jesus is there for them. One sentence to bring hope to every diagnosis that says you're going to die. But a sentence that changes Everything. Thirteen words, but what a message. And it begins, it begins, Jesus starts this message with this, truly, truthfully, verily, assuredly, I say to you, truth. Can I just interject here how valuable truth is? Maybe we're reminded in this day unlike maybe some other days, in a day where information seems cheap. Information is everywhere. Information is overload. Knowledge? Ah. The Internet has given us knowledge beyond. And in a day where, where we sometimes really struggle to discern Truth. Who do I believe? Whose message and who out of these thousands of voices, who speaks the truth? It makes me think of the day that we live in and John wrote about it in 1 John 4, 1. He said, Beloved, do not believe every spirit. But test the spirits. I would admonish all of you here today. Test the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. To the criminals and to all of mankind, Jesus speaks and Jesus is truth. And I say to all of you today that there is a voice that you can trust. 
There is a message that you can build your life on. There is one who is 100% completely reliable, and his name is Jesus, the Son of God. And Jesus said, truthfully, today. Today. Could it be possible that a criminal hours or even minutes from certain death can find hope in that present day? And the truth is he only has that day. And this is some of the wonder of the gospel. And there are so, so many things about Jesus that, that we are amazed at. There are so many things about the gospel. When you read the Bible, it's amazing. It's, it fills us with wonder. Truly, this is one of the amazing wonders of the gospel. That today, that right now, your life and eternity can be changed. Wow. To think that on any given day, that kind of dramatic eternity altering shift can take place and it's true because today is the day of salvation for everybody in the room for everyone listening to this message i don't know what yesterday was and tomorrow has no guarantee the scriptures declare and teach us truly that today is a day of opportunity. Today, Jesus loves you. Today, Jesus looks upon you. And today, if we humble ourselves, he can say to us, truly, today, today, you will be with me. And I love that about Jesus. Of the many things that I love about Jesus, it's this, this is one that I love dearly. He says, today, you will be with me. And what I hear in Jesus saying that is I hear him saying, let's go together. Let's go together. I've never been one for, for, for liking Walks in the woods after dark. Not my thing. I remember as a boy, it was, only, it was only a quarter of a mile. Maybe it wasn't far away, but I'd go to my friend's house. and We'd play baseball out in the yard, and I rode my bike up there. And My house wasn't, it felt like five miles, but it wasn't that far away. But we'd play, and it, it would get too late. And... and Sun would be setting and darkness would start and, and I'd just kind of forget. And all of a sudden I realized it was quite dark and I had to ride that bicycle all alone and try to make it home. It's incredible the stories I made myself believe on the way home. Monsters and woods that come alive. I love that about Jesus. He says, I'll go with you. I'll go with you. He says, truly today, you will be with me. Let's go together. Oh. You see, salvation doesn't send us on our way. You don't, you don't come to Jesus, and Jesus' response to that is, great, now on your way. Salvation brings us to a savior, a companion, a friend. Can I encourage you today? Don't walk alone. There's no need to. There's no need to panic yourself and peddle yourself to try to just get through the woods and get home alone. Jesus will go with you. And through this perilous journey called life, Jesus will go with you. He will be with you to the extent that you want him to be with you. And Jesus says, today, truly today, you will be with me in paradise. And the, the gospel message 
is of hope not only for this life, but for the next. And for all our efforts in this life, and thankfully I'm reminded now and then, and the thought comes to me, Tim, be careful about spending too much time figuring out, planning this life. A bit of that's fine, but this life isn't the end, folks. There is a life to come, and what about that life? How much time, how much effort, how much planning, how much investment, how much thoughtfulness? John 14, 2, Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And in that one sentence, that one word, paradise, Jesus gave a dying criminal hope. Hope that hanging on a cross, despised, full of shame, that his life, he had a mother, he had a father, maybe, maybe one or both of them were looking on, and maybe he felt such shame, but in that one dying experience to know that there's such a thing called paradise, <laughs> heaven. How many, how many love knowing that there is heaven to come. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, that, that this world is not my hope and it's not my home. Thank you, God, that there is a far better place. Jesus said, and I believe him. I go to repair a place for you that where I am, you can be also. This past summer, while sitting on the deck in Murray Corner, a car pulled into the driveway. I'll change the names. We'll call them Bill and Mary. Bill was a lifelong fisherman. I think you'll know what I mean when I say that Bill was fairly crusty. I say that with the utmost respect and admiration. He, uh, when you shook his hands, kind of felt like you were grabbing on to the bark of, of a tree. His hands were well-worn, well-worked. His face, his face bore the 80-some-odd years of salt wind and spray. Bill and Mary had never been to visit us before. I knew Bill from the times that we crossed paths at the general store. And then I, then I became friends with Bill during a couple of years that I decided to make muffins for whoever was at the store on any given Friday that Saturday that I happened to be in Murray Corner, I would make muffins and take them down to the store, and there'd be a few people that would gather, and we would sit on stools or stand there and sip coffee and eat a muffin, and, and Bill, Bill figured out that if I was in town, there might be a muffin around, so he'd always, he'd show up, he'd show up, and we became friends. We sat and talked. He told me stories. Bill had stories. And for better or for worse, I believe them all. But Bill and Mary come into the yard, and Bill gets up on the deck, and he sits down. He looks across, and Bill tells me that it, Bill tells me that he's sick. 
that he's real sick. Bill tells me that he has, he says, I have cancer. And they say, I have it really bad. And I'm not going to live long. And Bill said this, you know I'm not a churchgoer, but I was wondering if you'd say a few words after I'm gone. Now, this was unplanned on my part, what I said to Bill. I'd never said it before like this, and in that moment, it was it as if the Holy Spirit put words in my mouth, and I believe that he did, and I just, I just looked across, and I said, Bill, I'd be honored to say a few words after you pass. But Bill, when I stand with your ashes, I want to be able to tell everyone that's gathered that day that you're in heaven. I want to be able to, to give everybody that attends. And by the way, Bill, Bill told me that it wasn't going to be a funeral per se. He said, I want you to, I want you to take my ashes with Mary and my couple sons and their wives and a few and you're going to get on you're going to get on Sean's boat lobster boat and you're going to go out in the middle of the strait and you're going to spread my ashes and we're going to have a funeral on the water and that's supposed to be coming this spring pray for calm seas be my first funeral in a boat I said, Bill, I want to be able to tell everybody that you're in heaven. And to do that, you need to be forgiven. In order to go to heaven, Bill, you need Jesus in your heart. And the only way to get Jesus in your heart is to ask him to come into your heart and ask him to forgive you of your sins. I said, Bill, do you want to go to heaven? You know, when you put it like that, and someone has a diagnosis of cancer, and you haven't got long to live, and you just say, Bill, do you want to go to heaven? It seems like it was something like that for, for that guy dying on the cross. It was like Bill said, of course I want to go to heaven. He said, yes. And his eyes welled up with some tears. I said, well, Bill, let's, let's pray together. And so Bill and I prayed that day. Bill and I got done praying. I looked over at Mary. Mary's crying. I said, Mary, do you want to go to heaven too? <laughs> yes, I do. And there on the deck, prayed. Bill didn't last very long after that day on the deck. Bill died. But I have good news today. That when Bill came to the end of his life, he wasn't looking for loopholes. He'd found the answer. He wasn't grasping at straws. He wasn't hoping for the best. He had found the answer. A criminal in a dying moment, found the answer. And the answer was, and the answer is today, Jesus. I'm going to ask the musicians to come, please, and play softly. So what about you? What about you? What about your relationship with God? I admire you. You're in church today, but it's not about church. Bill never did get to go to church, and the thief on the cross never did get to go to church. Isn't it interesting that lots of people who never went to church are going to go to heaven, but lots of, and lots of people that spent their life in church... maybe aren't going to heaven because it's not about that.
It's about a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, truly, truly, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And no man comes to the Father but through me. So two things that we can do in response to the message today. And one of them is, have you asked Jesus to remember you? The criminal said, Jesus, remember me. Just love that. Kind of warms your heart when you're remembered. If you walk up to someone and they shake your hand. And they remember your name. It's, it's kind of neat to be remembered. Well, have you asked Jesus to remember you? And I'd ask you personally today, have you asked Jesus Christ to be your personal Savior? And if you haven't, you can, just like a thief on the cross said, Jesus, remember me. In a prayer, you can ask Jesus to remember you. And one thief remained hard and bitter. One thief, all he could say was, if you are the king, then get us down off this cross relieve our present suffering with no thought of eternity one thief remained hard and bitter and one thief yielded and humbly asked for help and so I would speak to someone in the room or someone who may be watching this message and say what about the burden that you carry what about the load that life has become the heaviness, the hurt. And I would ask you this question, why, why carry your burden alone? But in a moment of humility and prayer to receive the help that Jesus offers you. So I'm going to pray now. And if you need Jesus to be your Savior, then as I pray, you invite Jesus into your heart. You ask him, remember me. Jesus, come into my heart. I prayed this prayer with Bill and Mary. I'd be honored to pray it with you today. And you can just say a simple prayer and receive Jesus. And if you have a heavy burden in your heart, I want you to know that Jesus cares about your journey. He cares about your life. He cares about your struggle. He cares about your feelings, your experience, your disappointments. Jesus cares. You're not a throwaway to him. He loves you. Oh, he desperately loves you. And he wants to make it better, and he will make it better. And that doesn't always mean, and that doesn't always mean that the circumstance immediately changes, making it better sometimes. is that he brings peace to our heart. He brings perspective to our gaze. He brings an understanding to our mind. And I'm going to pray for you. So would you pray? Come on. Why don't you pray as I pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, oh, what a Savior you are. And I pray for someone today, Lord, that needs to surrender their life to you. I pray that in this moment, that in this moment, they would simply offer this prayer, even as I pray it now. And you go ahead and you pray it in your heart to the Lord. Heavenly Father, I need you. Father God, I want you in my life. And I confess my sin to you, my failures, my shortcoming, and I confess that I need you and I want you. Jesus, be my Lord, be my Savior. Come into my heart. I want you in my life now, and I want to be with you in paradise, in eternity. So, Lord Jesus, I receive you right now. And Father, I pray for those who carry a heavy load, for those who are under such duress and stress and strain, the cares of this life are crushing. I pray in Jesus' name, lift 
lift that burden right now as they cry out to you. Just, just call upon Jesus. Just ask him for his help. Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. Lord, I pray and I know that you will come close to that broken heart, come close to that hurting person and lift that load right here in this room. Lord, for people here in this place, I pray a relief and a release from the burden of life. And I pray for someone listening to this message, I pray right now in this moment, let your grace come to them right now wherever they are and bring your strength, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And is it, isn't it great to live free, to have your burden lifted? How many, how many would say it's great to have a, a burden lifted? You ever been there, ever, ever experienced the casting of your cares? What a, what a great thing it is. If you're watching online today and you prayed with me as I prayed, I would love to connect with you. If you just click on the link that says connect with us, I'll be in touch with you quickly. And we'll continue to pray together for God's grace and his goodness in your life. Thank you so much for joining us. It's always such an honor to share our service with you. If you'd like to keep up with everything going on at Kingsway, make sure to like our Facebook page or follow us on Instagram. If it was your first time here, don't forget about the link in the description to the online connection card. We'd love to get in touch with you. Thank you so much for joining us and have a great week. God bless you.